Hello guys, it's been a while, so I thought I would do a Draw This In Your Style challenge, but this time with a twist. I thought it'd be fun to draw all of my childhood favourite characters in my style now, because there's so many different characters from my childhood that I just love and would love to represent now. Now the first one I decided to do was Thomas the Tank Engine, because like many people, Thomas the Tank Engine is one of those franchises that kind of exists before your actual memory begins. So I thought it was the perfect place to start. Now I started off designing how the character of Thomas would look in my sketchbook because I wasn't exactly sure of what I wanted. When starting off this series, I wanted it to be right. I wanted it to be perfect, but uh, this is me we're talking about. It's never gonna be perfect, no matter how perfectionist you are. <laughs> Originally, the idea was to do a recreation of the Thomas and the Magic Railroad poster, and that's how I was gonna go about doing this series. However, I changed my mind pretty much halfway through the designing process, and it's why I have a human design of lady. Now on the page, you can see that I started doing a little sketch of Thomas actually as a train. Now, if you've ever sketched any vehicles or even just a steam train in general, you need some form of perspective because it's not gonna look right otherwise. And I was never good at perspective when I was in school and even now it's, it's still a bit wonky. <laughs> Don't ask me why I made the decision to draw Thomas as a train first, because that took way too long. It was unnecessarily difficult. But if anything, I feel like it helped me improve a little bit. Why do I do this to myself? Making things 10 times harder than they need to be. While in the design process in my sketchbook, I did actually have another artist's interpretation of a human Thomas in my mind. Back in 2014, 2015, I used to follow an artist known as Sugar Rush, now known as Dilemma Art. She had a human Thomas the Tank Engine AU, and she used to do these humanoid character versions of Thomas and friends, and they were so cool. So I had her 2014 designs in the back of my mind. However, I checked back to see if this artist was still doing that kind of thing, and they do over on a Tumblr blog. I thought it was important to mention because I don't want anybody to think I was directly copying this artist's work. So while referencing images for this video so I could draw Thomas as a train first before I did the drawing in my style, I was looking into the type of train Thomas was, which was based on an E2, but I also came across the fandom. Now the fandom actually skews a lot older. Now I wanted to find out why that was. And I found out that it's because there's a lot of AUs, especially like this human AU that Dilemma Art has. But I also found that Thomas the Tank Engine was full of world building, full of lore. It was also connected to a real world timeline, even though it's a fictional island off Barrow Inverness, the British Isles. I always knew that the Railway series and the television show that came uh, in the 80s to 90s was a British property and actually was based in the UK. Now some of you might think that Thomas the Tank Engine on a surface level is childish, but if you actually deconstruct everything that goes into it, especially the model making, the film production, Nowadays, it would be the animation as well. There's so much that goes into it that you don't think about as a kid. It really is a work of art and really makes you appreciate it a lot more. Now, I've recently been watching the content of a YouTuber known as the Unlucky Tug for my research because he has done videos into the map of Sodor as well as the history and the timeline. He's also done reviews on some of the movies and the seasons as well, but the series that I found the most interest in is his series called Tug's Trains. Now, if you like doll repainting videos, you'll like this because it is essentially model making. And I love the fact that he has his alternate takes on the characters and even adding the characters that appeared in the later seasons into his version of events. Just like many other fandoms, this fandom has its creative bunch too. And speaking of AUs, the AU that I fell down the rabbit hole of was Sodor Fallout. Now this is an AU where 
the engines are mutated. This is a way more mature AU. The creator apparently was obsessed with Chernobyl documentaries and the fallout and what it could do and the whole process behind that. So I can really grasp why this AU took off like it did. I personally love documentaries and the way they've written this story is just so clever. It makes sense with the timeline as well as everything else, but I really would not recommend the AU if you are under a certain age because it involves blood, gore, mutation, and even death of major characters. It's an intense AU, not for the faint of heart. My first exposure to Sodor Fallout was actually through YouTube recommended feed because I watch a lot of speed paints in my free time and an artist's speed paint from Sodor Fallout was actually in my recommended and then that led me down the rabbit hole. Now we get on to designing Thomas as a human character. Now I was in my element. Now I already said that I had Dilemma Art's old interpretation of Thomas as a human in the back of my mind. When I was drawing this character, I hadn't seen her newer designs. When coming up with my own design for Thomas, I kind of used that as a baseline and then built upon it of what I would change how I would go about depicting certain things about Thomas's design. Another artist depiction of Thomas, not as a human, but uh, another art style is by James Farr. He has this series called Trainsformers. It was a very, very popular back in 2011 to 2012, and then it got canceled because Hit Entertainment struck him down with copyright strikes, even though it was a fair use parody. And he recently just released a reboot to the series. And oh my God, he's very, very talented as an animator. It's amazing. While doing the digital sketch, I really wanted to flesh out the design a little bit more because yes, I did a basic sort of design in my sketchbook, but I didn't do a full body design in my sketchbook. I had an idea of what I wanted to do below the waist, but not a complete idea. So while sketching, I was thinking, oh, well, Thomas could have heelys. You know, there's a wheel in the shoe and it's a very old school kind of thing. But then it hit me. I never had heelys as a kid. I had those cheap strap on wheels to your shoes because my family could not afford those trainers with wheels. Is it just me or when I looked for references of these strap-on heel wheels, they reminded me of old toy trains. Also, this is a series where I draw stuff from my childhood. It's the perfect combination. <laughs> So the original idea was Thomas and the Magic Railroad. It's not a really great movie, but it was my jam when I was a child. Also my trauma as well. However, looking back at it, this chase scene was mwah, loved it. For this video, I ended up re-watching that movie as well as watching the editor's cut. And it's really interesting to find out what was axed in the movie at the last minute and just what was axed in the series as well. Not only did I watch The Unlucky Tug, but I also watched this channel called Nick Starwind who goes into lost media and especially the lost media of Thomas the Tank Engine. It's definitely really fascinating stuff. Later finding out that there is more to your childhood than you first expected, not gonna lie, is very interesting. <laughs> 
Another thing I really like about the series, doing it in this art style, is that I'm actually doing it in the same way as I would do my commissions, because I now do digital commissions. And if you're interested in anything in this sort of style for yourself, even for friends or family, I'll have my Etsy store linked down below. I also do traditional commissions as well. Since uploads on this channel are now fewer and far between, I'm using every video as a chance to plug the Etsy store. I hope you don't mind, because I do pretty much everything on that Etsy store myself. Any support is greatly appreciated. I do have a list of characters that could actually appear in this series next time, but I would still love to know if you have any suggestions down below in the comments section. What characters were a part of your childhood and why do you like them? I just thought this was a really interesting take that I've seen nobody else do on the draw this in your style challenge. So I did plan for this video to come out a lot earlier. However, I didn't really have all the details set in stone, I just had the concept for the video in my head, and I hadn't thought through all the details. There's only so much you can say on a piece of artwork before you start repeating yourself. So I wanted to find something else to fill out the commentary, and that's where my research came in. I wanted to research into why Thomas the Tank Engine has a such big fandom, and why it skews older, and also the different AUs as well the world building behind Sodor, because I personally love character development and drawing different characters as well. The world building is something that I do a lot with my own characters, so just discovering a world behind something from your childhood kind of has this air of romantic magicalness to it. I don't know if it's just me, but the model era of Thomas just was so realistic. It was practically grounded in real life and it looked so real. It immersed you into that world. And since I'm from the UK anyway, just it felt like a real place. The show gave me a real fascination with steam trains and just the history behind the railways in general. Because finding out that these characters were based off real life locomotives and all the little trivia facts and stuff, just, oh, I live for all the little details. So here are the final illustrations, Thomas as a train, and then Thomas as a human. If you would like to see more of this type of content, I would recommend subscribing with post notifications on to this channel, because I'm not sure exactly when I'll next upload, because I'm not the most consistent of beings. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video of whatever I decide to make. Bye guys!